I love the idea of people taking time out of their lives uh, to prove to themselves that if they're defined by the vision of the future, then they're not living by the memories of the past. And that's where the unknown exists. So many people, the unknown is a scary place. So they don't see that future because they're used to seeing that future with evidence, with their senses. And the, you have to be able to get beyond that and stay in the unknown, stay in that discomfort. And then in that moment to be, begin to self-regulate, like, oh, I'm starting to feel a little anxiety. Oh, I'm starting to feel a little frustration. That's the defining moment where your body's going back to the past because emotions are a record of the past. Or you go into routine again. So you catch yourself. It's a victory. And if you keep catching yourself, those victories add up. And it's not so much about your wealth or your health or your freedom or your new relationship. It's actually about who you become. Mm -hmm. And so overcoming the old self allows us to become somebody else. And there is that period of transition. Yeah. I call it the void where there's just not a lot happening. And you just got to be able yeah. to keep going and continuously get to the end of your belief. That is the key because the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving. So we got to come initiated mm -hmm. into this and understand that thousands of years of programming that says that we have to change things uh, matter to matter, mm -hmm. you know, in three dimensional reality. And it will take time. But to begin to connect to that resource called the quantum field and create from the field instead of from matter, there's a lot of unlearning that has to go on. You have to really begin to mentally rehearse like so you ask yourself at the end of your day i do this every day how'd i do how'd i do today bro how'd you do did you do good where'd you fall from grace what 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 was it that caused you to go unconscious f for the rest of the day like mm. what was that moment now if you're a student of life you'll begin to contemplate, well, it was that person that said that thing, then I react, things didn't go my way, and I started feeling angry or frustrated or fearful. The next time that happens, how could I evolve my experience? Now, you may have to search for some answers mm. of the best model to build, or you may actually have a long contemplation and start to go, God, the next time that happens, I think I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'm going to plan my behaviors. And the act of closing your eyes and rehearsing what you're going to do begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you already did it. Mm -hmm. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. And if you keep installing that hardware, the hardware will become a software program, which means you'll just start acting like a happy person. Why? There's no magic there. You installed the circuitry. So... That's more important than the news. Right. It's more important than answering any email or any text. It's more important than talking about your past or some dinner. If you can begin to just think about how you're going to do it differently, that's the building process neurologically already. So now you have to get conscious in order to do that. And it takes some time. That means you got to shut your cell phone off. You got to close your door. You got to take a break from everything out there and begin to practice. And so by experience, then you start noticing, Oh, here it comes. Here comes the frustration. Here comes the fear. And now we've given people the tools to be able to self regulate yes. to create brain and heart coherence. And so you see people say, Excuse me one minute, I just gonna need a minute. They take some breaths, they get back in, they connect to the energy of their future. This is incidental compared to where they're going. So they don't fall from grace. They don't allow their energy to drop. And so, yeah, in the beginning, it takes a lot because yeah. it takes a lot of energy and awareness to stay conscious and not go unconscious. But if you're persistent and you're determined and you're sincere, you begin to figure it out. You begin to say, I am not going to give my power away to that person or that circumstance when I can use it to heal or to create a new future. And so people then won't excuse themselves and say, I had a hard day yesterday, I had a fight with my coworker or my ex, or, and I don't feel like doing the work. Well, that's the time to get back on the horse. Yeah. Because, because it's the 
It's all of those times that we self-correct. Mm. Those are the most valuable moments to us. People who have had profoundly transcendental experiences where they, we say, got lit up, they connected, and their brain goes into very, very high coherent states and super gamma patterns that are way outside of normal, and they have a transcendental download or connection that's mystical. They look back at their entire life they don't want to change one thing in their past because it got them to that moment. Mm. That's the moment the past no longer exists. Now, by the same means, they look back at their past and they see all those tough moments where they overcame themselves and they fall in love with that person. They don't look at the good meditations or the things that went well. They look, they know that it was those moments that got them to this moment. And I, I think then that's when they begin to understand that that all of the hard work, all the effort in who we become makes, uh, no one can take that away from us. So then once we arrive at that level and we experience whatever the dream is or whatever we create, the next thing is do it until you fully enjoy it. And then when it gets boring or predictable, let's go again. Let's do something else. Yeah. And I think that's evolution. And all of those cars and homes and whatever that is, there are symbols of what it looks like when a person actually arrives at this concept called abundance, right? Mm -hmm. So if those things help them to associate with something that creates a feeling mm -hmm. of abundance and they're building their vision board to help them to get clear on their intent, then that's fine because they're associating objects or things or material things that they'll say, that's when I know that I'm abundant. That's fine. Uh, other people will say, look, abundance just means that I have more than I need. And I'm happy with that. And for them, there's a feeling that is associated with that. And when they begin to dream about their future, they may see themselves in a scene or see themselves a certain way. I don't care what it takes for the person to get there because once they have their abundance and this happens quite a bit in our work when you finally have everything you want there's only one thing you're going to ask yourself how am i going to contribute to the world mm -hmm. how am i going to make a difference so we use different tools to help people to get to that point but if the person's doing the vision board and they're saying when i get my new car i get my new house i get my new relationship then I'm going to feel so great. Now, that, well, then they're back to the program waiting yeah. for it to happen for them to feel the emotion. They're, they're believing their outer world has to change in order for them to feel better. There's, there's no effect of drawing the experience to you with that way. So the person has to use those tools to get them into the emotional state for them to feel like it's already happened. Now, think about this. If you get up from a creative process and you feel grateful, you feel a love for life, you feel a joy for existence, you feel a passion uh, to for the moment, you will not be looking for your future because you'll feel like it's already happened. Mm. It's the moment that we start feeling those self-limiting emotions that we feel separation, and then we start looking for it again. And well then, if you're waiting, you're not creating, you're, you're in separation again. That's so it. then, yeah. so then, whatever it takes for you to move into a state of being, and what is a state of being? Thoughts are the vocabulary of the brain. Feelings are the vocabulary of your body. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So then if you wake up in the morning and you come, come back to your senses with a clean slate and you say, I don't feel anything, and you say, well, let me start thinking about all the problems in my life. Well, all those problems are connected to different people or different objects or things at different times and places. The moment you remember your problems, a memory is a record of the past. You're thinking in the past. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with them. So all of a sudden you start feeling unhappy, you start feeling bitter, you start feeling frustrated. So now your body's in the past. So then most people then create a state of being that's connected to their past. And if they're in the familiar past, then they are going to crave the predictable future and they're going to fall back into routine. Mm -hmm. So then 
We want people then to get very clear on that vision of their future, however they do it, and begin to combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion. And the stronger the emotion they feel from the vision they're creating, the more altered they feel inside of them, the more they're going to pay attention to the pictures in their mind. And now they're remembering their future. And biologically, it's exactly the same as remembering your past. In fact, if you're not being defined by a vision in the future, it means you're making your past more real than your future. Mm -hmm. You're falling in love with your past. You're more in love with your past than you are with your future. That you're believing in your past more than you're believing in your future. When you get to that moment where you have that feeling, that's your compass. Because that feeling is going to drive your behaviors. It's going to drive more of those thoughts. And when you feel that feeling and it's visceral, no person, no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that vision. And, and you will be initiated in, by the universe into wealth. You will be initiated into health. You'll be initiated into freedom. Those people, all those people that have healed themselves of all those different health conditions, they are so humble and so happy and they feel so great that they would never trade this feeling because of what you thought of them. They, they, they've, they've left that program behind a long time ago. They actually don't care how you think of them. They, they actually are so happy with themselves that they're no longer dependent on anything outside of them. Now, I think that's a really important moment because that's the moment we give people permission in our lives to do the same, right? And I think that more and more people are beginning to figure that out uh, as they do this work.